Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I, I hope you all are well by Allah's grace and uh, in a state of good iman and safety and security. Alhamdulillah. Um, so we are on the verge of beginning the month of Zul Hijjah, uh, the most uh, blessed 10 days of the year, I think all of you know. The best 10 nights of the year are the last 10 nights of Ramadan and then the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are the best 10 days of the year. So I just wanted to record a short message uh, to share with you at this uh, auspicious time. Um, there are four main things I wanted to, uh, to mention. So uh, the first thing of course is that um, you know, just to remind myself and all of you the importance of this month. We mentioned before we have begun the, uh, the, se the series of the three sacred months, Dhul Ka'ada, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram. So now we are in the middle of that and we are starting uh, the month of the actual pilgrimage. And the pilgrimage itself commemorates um, the life and impact of one of the first families in Islam, uh, which is the family of Sayyidina Hajara, Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Ismail. Um, we must remember our mother Hajara. She is the founder, really, of the city of Mecca, right? And uh, in order to establish that city, which has so much prominence, in the human story, uh, she sacrificed uh, pretty much everything. Uh, SubhanAllah, except for her little son, you know, her security, her life with her husband, in a, they were in what is today the Fertile Crescent, right? And what is the, the Levant before. So from there she had to go to a barren place, or a horrible place, was left behind by her husband. Uh, all of this she did with contentment, knowing that it is from the Amr of Allah, from the commandment of Allah, from the Qadr, from the plan of Allah. So her sacrifice really commemorates service, her immense devotion to service to God. Then we have her son, Sayyid Ismail, السلام, that when he was a little boy, uh, and uh, you, we all know we do this for that, you know, even if you don't go for the Hajj, you make the Qurban. His willingness to give up his life for Allah uh, and his trust in this command from Allah that, uh, that his father brought him. So he exemplifies complete taslim, complete surrender to Allah's will. So really Islam comes from that same meaning that you are in a state surrendered to the will of God upon you, even sometimes if it doesn't make any sense, right? So, subhanAllah. And then here we have his father, Ibrahim alayhi salam. His whole life is a series of lessons for us. So this is why we have to study the lives of our predecessors. They're not meant to be fairy tales that you read to your children, right? They are people, real people who lived, struggled mightily, suffered greatly, and succeeded exceedingly. So that we have in their life uh, uh, inspiration and we have uh, an example and we have role models. So we should take them as that and try to live like they lived. So Ibrahim salam, if you look at his life, once he realized who Allah was and he went through his own period of questioning and came to, and he came to a realization. Uh, since that time, he has exemplified um, lifelong obedience to Allah. Whatever Allah puts upon him, he obeys. And he doesn't rely on anyone except Allah to help him, right? So it's complete tawakkul on Allah. And um, so if you take these three together, 
Sayyidi Hajar, Sayyidi Ismail, or Sayyidi Ibrahim, you have surrender, obedience, and service. So these three things really are what constitute what every Muslim should be. Because once you enter Islam, you surrender your will to Allah's will, huh? and then you obey Allah's commands, and then you become a servant of God on earth. Truly, you have entered the state of um, Ubudiyya, right? To serve Allah. But to become an abd of Allah, a servant of Allah, you need to know what the commands are so you can obey them. So you have to learn about Allah and learn about His commandments. And you have to understand the concept of Ubudiyya, what we call Lordship. But Lord is very, very poor translation for the uh, word Rab. No? You have to understand Allah's right as the Rab and your rights and obligations as the Abd. And Allah has obligations upon you too, which he has imposed on himself in the Quran, right? Not that we put it on him. He himself has said, I will do this for you and this for you and this for you. And Allah does not change his promise. But we ourselves have then obligations as the servants of Allah. So you really need to understand Rububiyya and Ubudiyya. Now you can't understand that if you don't understand the cosmos. How creation is organized, uh, the different types of creation, how Allah's command works, what is destiny, what is Qadr, what is Qadha, what is the execution of that destiny, Allah's planning and execution, as I say, and how your place in all of this works. That is the key thing for you to understand. What all of this is, who made it, and you. <laughs> right? Now. So it is essential you learn. Absolutely essential you learn. So, you know, 20, 30 years ago, there were many, many people, myself included, when I was much younger, uh, yearning to know but no books no teachers no libraries uh, even the translations of the Quran are very poor and I remember how much I used to struggle I used to struggle to find some knowledge subhanallah and then now Allahu Akbar you have your YouTube you have uh, Google Scholar you have this and that and subhanallah you have uh, the internet, you can connect to teachers anywhere in the world, wherever they are, subhanAllah. So these are immense blessings, immense help, immense provision. This is rizq huh? Allah has put in front of you to help you get through a very momentous time in history that you have been chosen to be a part of. Don't forget that. You are not here in 2022 by accident or 1443. It's Allah's plan that you were going to come onto earth in this period. And this period, subhanAllah, is an incredibly challenging period. We are going through enormous changes. And if you don't have knowledge, you will become very confused. And you will become so bewildered that you won't know which way to turn. And slowly, your strength will be worn down and worn down and worn down until it is worn out. And now you are at the whim of whatever hawa, whatever thought comes to you. You will just follow that because you, your inner strength, that iman is, so it becomes weakened because you have to work to make it strong and to grow it and build it. So you're equipped enough to handle this period. So you have no more excuses, no more reasons not to seek knowledge, right? The people of old, you know, uh, they had some excuse to present to Allah, some reason to say, Ya Rabbi, we wanted to learn. We couldn't find anyone to teach us. Nowadays, love, you, you can't. So it is completely up to you. The onus is on you. You have to learn what you need to know. So you can fulfill this, your obudiya, right? And uh, not just because you have to fulfill something, because it will strengthen you and protect you 
and enrich you. This is true provision, true risk, risk from Allah that you understand and know and gain your power. Hmm? So you also need to know, not just, you just not need to only know knowledge, you need to know how to identify what is correct knowledge and what is incorrect or yani not as good. So that is something people need help with. How do you identify correct knowledge? Because in non-sacred sciences, in secular sciences, we have conventions and formalities. We know which universities to go uh, how to find, gauge the qualifications of our teachers, etc. But when it comes to sacred sciences, it becomes much harder. Um, so I wanted to mention this, that we have covered, uh, subhanAllah, by Allah's uh, immense fadl upon us. We thank Allah for that. Uh, we have done, um, mashallah, we covered Surah Ra'ad, right, in five live online classes, mashallah. Uh, and that is now on the YouTube channel. And Surah Ra'ad has just 43 ayat, the 13th Surah of the Quran, but is replete, bursting <laughs> with cosmological uh, meanings, explaining a lot of these things in a very precise, very concise form, including the characteristics of a good teacher, how to identify a good teacher versus a not so good one. Hmm? So we call these true teachers, people who truly are equipped to teach you cosmological realities, we call them the Ulul Albab. So what are the Ulul Albab? What does that term mean? So that is explained in these in these classes. So I hope you'll go and review them. Surat Rad this also explains the cosmology, the organization of the Mulk, the Malakut, the Aizat, the Jabarut, the Kursi, the Arsh, the Dat, you should know these things. Explains Qada and Qadr, Allah's plan and execution, and how that word, the Kalima, moves through uh, the Mulk, the Dunya, back to Akhirah. And explains how these things are written in the Umul Kitab. And the Ilm al-Kitab, what does this mean? What is this writing? Why is writing so important? What is the connection between writing and your destiny and fulfilling your destiny? What will fulfilling your destiny bring you? What are the consequences of you not fulfilling your destiny? Hmm? These things you should know. These are the types of inner or deeper or foundational aspects of Ilm that you will need to face what is to come. What is to come is going to be very difficult. We are already living in the early signs of enormous flux. After 2010, the world has been changing on almost every front. In a, such rapid progression, most people are bewildered. Even our ulema are bewildered, right? And it takes so many years of training to master one subject. And then our religious scholars are called upon to address so much development in so many different technologies. It's very bewildering. I think the time has come now for you yourself to know what you need to know so you don't have to rely on other people. So learn these things. SubhanAllah, right? So I want to tell you that series is up. It's available. I hope you will. Go and review it. It's just five sessions. We covered the whole surah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, you will find some benefit in it. Now, the second thing I wanted to mention is that in a month's time, inshallah, if Allah chooses for us that we live so long, we will enter the year of 1444 of Hijri. Hmm? SubhanAllah. Now, I don't know if most of you know, some of you may know, some of you may not, of the Hadith Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some consider it da'if, some consider it, it's considered weak, I believe. I'm, I'm not sure if the other ulema will categorize it differently. But the Hadith of Rasul Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, and you can go and do your research and find it, right? And read all the riwayah and the commentaries. I. I'm already over my time, so I just mention it. 
Then Rasulullah said the time for the period for his ummah huh, is one day. And then he he further went on to say after Sahaba questioned him that he asked Allah, he made dua to Allah to increase the time. And Allah increased the time by half a day. And then someone asked him, one of the companions, what does this day mean? And he said a day is like a thousand years. So from that, some ulama have taken the idea that the Ummah of Muhammad, that is the dominant, uh, the time between for the Ummah of Muhammad is 1500 years. If that is the case, we are coming very close to 1500 years. And we don't know if that is from the birth of Muhammad himself, والسلام, or from the time Hijri began to be counted. So Hijri began to be counted in the 50, between the 50th and 54th year of the lifespan of Muhammad, right? That's when he made the Hijra. There's a, we are not exactly sure of exactly when it was, but and because the, the way the years were counted before he established our calendar were different. Before Rasulullah made our calendar the way it is, uh, the Arabs would add 10 days to the lunar year to make it equivalent to the solar year. So the calculations are very tricky. I don't want to go into that. But roughly, you can say the birth of Muhammad was around roughly 50 to 50, let's say 55 years. Uh, you have to add to Hijri. So if you add that, we are now in 1490s. Very coming very close to 1500. If you don't add that, there's some 50 odd years to go. Now, when you do your research on it, you might find a lot of uh, uh, articles online saying this is not true. And, it, and then they will refer Imam Suyuti's book generally. Imam Suyuti himself was talking about something different about the um, end of the human period on earth so that's a different matter so when you do your research learn some research methods also to be thorough to look at everything to look at positive negative look at the source of where you get your information I wish everyone would just do a course on basic course on research methods right <laughs> you should try to do that maybe I can teach that but this hadith is, 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 I mean, it's a hadith. Whether it is right or wrong, I don't want to comment, right? But generally, my, uh, I think wisdom, this is something my mother taught me, Allah She used to say, it's better to be safe than sorry, right? Or we say, better to err on the side of caution. You might have heard that. Uh, why take a chance? <laughs> Try, if you're going to be wrong, be wrong on the side where you have done your preparation. That's okay, because the more you prepare, even if you're wrong and the ummah doesn't end in the, alhamdulillah, you've reached, raised your rank with Allah, so you're going to win anyway. But if you don't take this ahadith seriously and you waste your time, uh, you, you have only yourself to blame. Hmm? Now, and then, of course, if you look at the signs around us, we have the climate crisis. Every year, the natural disasters are increasing. Uh, now we have war again in Europe, which may bring a lot of instability to the rest of the world. Uh, mostly the climate crisis, because that's a big sign for us. Because the purpose of human being coming to Earth is Khalifatul Ard, to look after the environment. So if we have failed so miserably in doing that and the ecology is imploding, why would Allah keep us alive? Right? Allah Ta'ala Alam, but this is just my way of thinking. Hmm. So I would say now is not the time for you to take these, even if they're da'if hadith, don't take them lightly, don't sweep them away, don't brush them under the carpet. Um, spend your time wisely, build your relationship with Allah. That is what will help you going forward. You have to have a personal connection with your Lord. Try to make it like Sayyidina Ibrahim's or Sayyidina Ismail's or Sayyidina Hajara's. This is this time of Hajj. Take use of the power that comes down during these blessed days. Because these blessed days, Allah commemorates what they did. And because he loves them so much for what they did, all of us 
for thousands of years have to follow in their footsteps. This is a mark of Allah's love. This is how Allah shows that he likes something or he accepts something. He makes sure it is never forgotten. Right? So remember that. Try to become like them. That is what you should be doing during this time, these precious days. And the only way to do that is like you build any relationship. A relationship is only as strong as the time you invest in it. Hmm? The quantity of time and the quality of time. That is the only way any relationship becomes strong. So the quality of time you spend with your Lord and the quantity of time. Yeah. So how do you spend that time with Allah? If you sit and speak to your Lord, increase your time of salah, uh, increase your time serving Allah, feed the poor, do some good, etc. Mostly zikr. Zikr is the key to all things because it's the easiest thing to do and all your free time now will become quality time you build with Allah. Now all of this, the story of um, Hajj, the establishment of the city of Mecca is tied to the birth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because after Sayyidina Ismail, uh -huh, the, the next great prophet for that city is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? So, our prophet alayhi salatu wa salam and the coming of our prophet alayhi salatu wa salam and his mission on earth and the bringing down of the Quran, only his heart could be right to remember that. People who disregard him and go to the Quran, very bad manners, <laughs> because if he didn't live, you wouldn't have the Quran. Allah created him and created his heart, his ruh. Uh, it is the only, only human being who could bring the wahi to earth. It is very heavy, the Quran is very, very heavy. When you start increasing your dhikr and you start allowing those meanings to sink into you, you will realize the weight of the Qur'an and the centrality of Rasulullah to the Qur'an, right? So you need to know now, Hajj is now tied to Muhammad. Muhammad is the, re the, the link to Kalamullah being with us on earth, the actual uncreated word of Allah being with us. So we need to familiarize ourselves with the story of Muhammad, always. If you have not read his biography, I highly suggest you do that. I remember I read the first time I read his biography, I must have been 11 or 12. And it was a very basic one in English. And ever since then I've been, whenever I get a chance to read more and any type of biography from any author, I read more and it's every single time you learn so much, subhanAllah, right? So now what we do, now we are bringing back our traditional knowledge that the colonial period uh, wiped out and took away from us, really, and made us so worried about it, like it broke the chain we had with our tradition, that now most Muslims are afraid even to read traditional books, which is very sad. Um, so in the old days, what the people would do is they would write the biography of Muhammad, his whole life story, as a beautiful poem. It takes a lot of skill in a language to do that. You know, those of you who study English literature, which is the language I, I'm better at, you know, the old ballads you write, this, the story of Beowulf, for example. Most stories of historical figures are presented as long poems. So the Arabs would do that, uh, the early uh, ulama, right great fukaha they would write in poetry form so it's easy to memorize because a lot of the early muslims were very adept at memorizing and you can sing it so that is their entertainment that is their music that is their songs instead of humming this and that these are the songs they hum so they are constantly reminded and constantly their heart and their ruh is being fortified and strengthened so when they write a poem of, a, of the biography of Muhammad, they call it the Mawlid because it's the story of how he was born, how he lived and his end. Nowadays, Muslims 
you can't mention the word maulid they get hysterical which is very foolish because educated people don't behave like that right they will think about a concept they evaluate what it means and come to a rational conclusion there's no reason to get dramatic now so one of the most famous uh, biographies of Muhammad was written by Imam Zain al Abidin Ja'fari ibn Hassan al Barzanji. He lived, uh, he died in the year 1177 by the common era, so that's Hijri, around 500 Hijri. He was the Grand Mufti of Medina of his time. So don't just throw away these people, you have to know a lot to become the Grand Mufti of Medina at that time. <laughs> when all the Muslims had so much more island than now. So you can't read 10 pages on the internet and throw out all of this. You are only robbing yourself. You're not hurting anybody else, right? So learn to have respect for knowledge and do yourself justice, not for anybody else, for yourself. If you have problems with these people, go and find out. Right? That's what I did. I mean, I didn't know either. No one was there to teach me. But I, mashallah, by Allah's barakah, I never threw away things. I went and found out and spent the time. Sometimes it will take you two or three days of research, sometimes two or three years. Right? But that is sincerity. You have to be sincere in your seeking knowledge. Don't be dismissive. Don't be hasty. Don't make a conclusion too quickly. If you don't know, say, I don't know. Don't say this is wrong with little knowledge, right? The same way, don't say this is right with little knowledge. Learn. So, because he wrote this biography and he had a beautiful name for it, he called it Ekad, uh, Ekad Jawhari Fi Maulid An Nabil Azhari, right? Uh, yeah, maybe like pearl, this man a string of pearls from the birth of the prophet of splendor beautiful name but these names are very long so we call it the Baruzanji Maulid <laughs> right and whenever you recite that you have refreshed yourself of the whole biography of the prophet's life so inshallah um, I will begin the Baruzanji Maulid as a recitation mashallah I do this a few times, alhamdulillah, the time has come for me to start, and I will go into my usual uh, practice of khalwa for these 10 days. Inshallah, I will start the recitation, but the last uh, uh, 10 pages, inshallah, we'll put the description, yani, we'll link the version I'll be reciting from in the, in that, that description box below. Um, the last 10 pages, I will recite it after Majlis uh, al-Zikr um, this Friday night. That's tomorrow, tomorrow night, inshallah. So if any of you can recite it yourself, uh, please join me for the completion of it. If you can recite the up to the last 10 page, we can make the 10, 10 pages together. Even not, just come and sit or listen. I mean, obviously, very few people are here with me physically but it will be on our podcast channel after the karmajlis inshallah that will also we'll put that in the description so you're welcome to join because i will be in a khalwa i will uh, i will not make a dua after a dhikr as usual uh, so those of you who come for dhikr regularly you should make your own dua and remember we are in these last 10 days ask allah Right after spending so long in very powerful adhkar, these are times of opening, so you must make a dua then. Now, so final point, alhamdulillah, we come to the last of it, uh, is that uh, at Irfa, subhanallah, we have uh, prevailed through many difficulties. And we, are, yeah, we have embarked on some very significant long-term projects, some of you are aware of which, but 
it's not the time yet to share them publicly uh, but it's a if you if you are able please uh, try to support us uh, either through with your time or with your money or uh, with your dua right so we are coming up to having some annual expenses we have to deal with we have to uh, renew our websites we have to update our podcasting licenses uh, we have to get audio video equipment uh, mashallah the donations you send uh, alhamdulillah i don't take any of it uh, uh, alhamdulillah i still you know have my teaching at the university uh, but we spend it on equipment really and uh, these things take money and also on on mater uh, materials we need for publishing our books mm. There are a few more books I've written that we need to publish. So uh, any help and support you can offer, may Allah accept from you and reward you for it. And you have my gratitude. Um, so I wanted to remind you of that, right? Um, and of course, what will make me most happy is if you will be watching and learning from whatever I can share on our channel so go and review that series on Surat Raad and we use the cosmology book a lot too to explain these foundational concepts in my experience my travels and life so many Muslim societies all around the world I have noticed this and I myself didn't know until I learned so now what I learn I want to share but it's up to you to take it <laughs> that is up to you all I can do is put it out uh, and it's free and it's there so please take it now so Allah says in Surah uh, Surah Baqarah right after Al-Fatiha you know Al-Fatiha summarizes the entirety of the Quran and your life on earth and your mission and everything then we start the elaboration and explanations Allah says in Surah Baqarah he starts with the mystical letters and then he says there is no doubt in this book and it is a guidance for people muttaqin who have taqwa of Allah, conscious of Allah. And then he goes on to explain who are these muttaq, muttaq, muttaqun, who are these people who have taqwa of Allah. First thing, alladheena yu'minuna bil ghaybi, those who have iman in the ghayb, those who believe in the unseen. What is the unseen? Everything other than the universe. The known universe, <laughs> there is so much more beyond the known universe you need to learn about. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghaybi wa yuqeemuna salata establish the prayer wa mima razaknaahum yunfikun and those who give out from our provision to them. Right? So Allah has given all of us a risk in some way He provides and you must be a person who gives out from that provision so subhanallah this is what i try to do whatever allah has given me of knowledge i try to share it but you have to take it uh, so you notice this the ghaib allah mentions the ghaib he mentions something very tangible like charity giving out and he mentions salah so salah ties the inner dimension with the outer dimension right salah properly done will take you to heaven and it should and you need to learn how to cultivate your faculties, your qalb and your ruh. So every time you go in sujood, you go to heaven and come back. If you're not doing that, if that is not happening for you, that is a signal for you that something is wrong. Okay? Like for example, if you, you know, if, I don't know, let me give a tangible, if you're going to the gym every day, and you're drinking all these protein shakes and you're working out but you're not building muscle mass you'll realize something is wrong in your body in your metabolic meta, meta, 
metabolism, right? In your biology and you go fix it. The same thing in your salah. If you are not achieving what salah is meant to give you, sakina should come. Any problems you have, any character issues you want to fix. If you are a person who loses your temper unnecessarily, that should go away. If you are a person who worries unnecessarily, that should diminish. Uh, if you are a person who is struggling to get up in the morning, that should improve. So if these things are... And you should test khushu in your salah. You should test that, at least for a brief moment, what it is like to leave this earth and be in heaven. If that is not happening for you, know that it is a sign that your heart is needs work, your ruh needs the room to fly. Your ruh is trapped if she can't go to heaven and come back. So how do you help your kalb and your ruh? Well, you need to learn. You need to learn the sacred sciences of ihsan. This is why ihsan was always a most treasured knowledge in the Muslim world. The science of ihsan, the hardest one of Islam, iman, ihsan. Ihsan is the hardest one, but the most, I would say, the objective of iman and Islam. If, you, if your iman and your Islam is not giving you this objective of ihsan, worshipping Allah as if you see him to become a muttaqi, have taqwa, you need to learn and you need to do or you will be in trouble because what is going to come you won't be able to face. Hmm? It's up to you. That is the burden of your free choice. I cannot force you. Nobody else can force you. We can only say um, Master Muhammad, he is a messenger. Nadirun wa Bashirun warns and gives good news. It's up to us to follow him, right? So the sacred science of Ihsan was robbed from us by the colonial catastrophe, right? Systematical assassination of our scholars, downgrading of our Islamic universities. So what they produced is very basic, not anything strong enough to withstand the pressures of modernity. We are trying to bring it back. This is what the objective of Irfa, to revive the sacred science of Ihsan. So anyway, you can support us. May Allah reward you and I will certainly pray for you and you have my thanks. Um, but our greatest happiness is, is if you achieve. Alhamdulillah. So with that, I will end. I must... Uh, Go, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah reward you and protect you all. So we will try to link all of this in the description and put this up on our channel in time. Give me your du'a. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa